Hello, Keith Ruck here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I'm going to be working on making some new way wipers for my Monarch lathe. Now, if you're not familiar, way wipers are little things that go on the machine that protect the ways. So ways are precision ground. Uh, they've got uh, scraped in surfaces up underneath them and you want to keep them clean. You don't want to let dirt and grime and dust and little metal chips and stuff get up underneath between those ways where it can scar them up. So these way wipers are just some little covers that kind of go across and up underneath there's a little recess in the back that holds some felt and a little piece of rubber that wipes that way clean as the carriage moves back and forth. The felt will absorb oil and kind of self oils it as it goes back and forth as well. Now, when I got the lathe that had way wipers on it, but they were all in pretty bad shape. They were, some of them were damaged, uh, really beyond repair. And I decided I'm gonna make a whole new set for them. So what I did was I, I took the originals off and I sent them to my friend, Charles Marlin, who is a really good in drawing things up in CAD. He actually modeled these, 3D modeled them. Um, we took his 3D models, uh, we 3D printed the actual model just like it. I checked everything to make sure it was a fit over on the lathe. From that, he took it and scaled it up for shrinkage, added a little bit of uh, material on there uh, to be machined off. Uh, we took the holes and stuff out and actually created a set of patterns, put some draft in it where they could be withdrawn from the sand, made some patterns. And those I sent to uh, uh, Clark Easterling over at Windy Hill Foundry and Clark cast new way wiper castings for me out of aluminum, which is what the originals were made out, out of. And now that's what we're gonna be working with today is machining these aluminum castings into a finished product, into a cover for the way wiper. Let me show you what we got to start with. So here's what we're starting with again. These are the aluminum castings. Uh, there's four of this style, two of this style, and these are actually the covers that go on the tailstock. And uh, all these need to be replaced. So again, these are the 3D printed ones that Tim Springer 3D printed for me. Tim actually builds custom 3D printers and in fact is building me one right now. I should hopefully have my own 3D printer soon. Uh, but in the meantime, he 3D printed these and these were the, the, what the finished product should look like. Uh, and he also 3D printed the, the patterns later. I sent those to Clark. Clark still has the patterns. Uh, he didn't send them back to me because I, I'd left them, I told him to keep, hang on to them in case I needed to recast them. Wouldn't have to send them back out there. I don't think I will, but I really didn't need them back. But anyway, you kind of see what we're working with and uh, we're gonna be working on these aluminum pieces to get them. This is one I've already done. I did it off camera just to kind of test out everything to make sure everything was gonna work. So let's get over there and go from this to this. So instead of doing precision machining on these uh, like we're typically doing in the shop, we're just gonna use the belt sander uh, to take these down to their, to their shape that they need to be. This is by no means anything precision about it. It's just a little cover. The thickness needs to be about right, but uh, we just need to flatten the two, the front and the back, and then just kind of smooth up the outer edges of these. So it's really not anything of any great um, precision. And uh, I could tell looking at the originals, it looked like that this is how they did those in the shop at Monarch, is uh, they just ground them to sh shape. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So let's get in here and do it. This is my Porter Cable belt sander. Uh, I, I picked this up recently. This is actually be the first real job that I've used it on. I played around with it a little bit, uh, but I'm excited to actually try it out for real. Uh, I still need to get my electrical cover for this. It blew off uh, on the trailer coming home, but uh, that should be fairly easy find. Let's fire up and get to work. I'm going to start by kind of hitting the bottom and getting that flat. We're going to come in here. Work on that front side. Now these are going to get hot, so I'm going to be dipping them in water to cool them off. Go ahead and hit the back side now. I've got my 3D printed piece that I can kind of gauge for the thickness. I still got a little bit of material to take off of both sides there. There's nothing real critical about it, but that'll give me a rough idea. Alright, that's pretty close. 
close to the right thickness. So now what I'll do is come in here and we will uh, start working on the outside profile. That's actually pretty good. All right, I like it. We'll uh, just continue on with some more of these. Go through the bigger cast in here. Same process as we did on the small one. Thickness about right. casting here for the uh, tail stock. Same process. All right, so after doing some sanding, this is what we got. Uh, I'm pretty happy with what we got here. So next step is uh, let's go ahead and get our holes drilled. And these have to be counterboard uh, for a socket cap screw as well. So um, let's go get set up to do that. I'm going to drill these over on the mill and I will get the spacing from one to the other. I use the digital readout on the mill to get that exactly where it needs to be, but I do need to kind of position the first hole mainly from the bottom. And I'm going to use this template, this one that we 3D printed as a guide because uh, it's, I know it's, it's good. And what I'm going to do is because what's important is that this hole be the right distance from the bottom and that we kind of get it centered up onto the part itself. I'm just going to put them both up against a little fence here that I, I put in, I'm going to take a transfer punch. I'll come down in that first hole and I'm just going to give me one dent. I'm not going to do them both, but that'll give me something to line up on the first one. And then once I get the first one done, I'll just dial the table over and drill the second one. So let me uh, get all these done. These have the same, um, same size hole gets drilled in them, so I use the same transfer punch. Let 
Now, this one uses a larger size hole. Let me see what size that transfer punch there is going to be just right. So same thing here. I'll line these up. Put our transfer punch in the first hole. Yeah, these transfer punches are just perfect for this kind of work right here where you want to transfer in one hole to something else. Particularly when it's a regular shape like this, you can, uh, these come in a set. These are fractional sizes here. So whatever size hole you got, you just uh, stick it down in there and pop, you got it. Let's go to the mill and get these drilled. We're ready now to go ahead and drill our holes. And uh, I've got this set up in here. It's got some parallels up under the bottom of this. I've already got my drill bit lined up on the first hole. And I'm using a number eight drill bit and uh, we're gonna be using an 832 socket cap screw is what's going down in here. So I need to go ahead and first, we'll drill that, uh, drill that through. Then I'm gonna use a counter bore here. Now the counter bore it's got a pilot that fits just down in that hole, but it's a flat bottom drill bit basically, and that will create the clearance for the socket cap screw. And uh, let me mark this uh, so I know how far down I need to go. Let me go grab a Sharpie pen. All right, that Sharpie mark should be just enough for me to kind of eyeball it. About right there. right. So now I'm going to take this out, put my drill bit back in. I've, um, I know that the spacing is uh, 5 eighths of an inch on this, so I'll just use my digital readout now to dial over 0.625, which is 5 eighths inches. Right there. Go ahead and put our second one hole in. Check that. Looks good. All right, so now notice I put the bottom in on my fixed jaw, okay? The height of these may vary a little bit, but what's important is, is that this will always be the same distance from the bottom there. So I can just come over here. We'll put our next one in and we'll have to center up on the first hole, but we should be just right on the distance from that back jaw. So we'll come over here now. Looks good right there. All right, same process here on the bigger piece. The spacing is different between these two holes. Uh, it's an inch and a quarter, but uh, the process is the same. And it uses the same 832 screws, so we'll use the same uh, counter bore. 
DRO again, and again, we're going to go inch and a quarter on these. 1.250. Oh. Right there. Now for the tailstock way covers, these are going to take a quarter 20 screws, so I'm using a quarter inch drill bit, but the process is the same. And I've got a counter bore for this one. Just like before. Put our drill bit back in here. This one has a spacing of uh, four and seven eighths, so 4.875. Again, I'm just using my digital readout. I zeroed it on the first hole. And we'll run over to 4.875, right about there. catch some crap for this but uh, I'm making do with what I got and uh, this is not the ideal setup for this but I've got my little uh, DeWalt battery powered handheld bandsaw but I'm needing to notch these uh, these pieces out right here and I don't have a bandsaw set up that I can just go do it on so this is kind of clunky uh, I got to hold the switch down with one hand saw with the other I don't have a table like I need to so guys, I'm telling you right now, this is not the way to do it, but it's the way I'm going to do it because uh, it's the, I need to get the job done. So this aluminum cut's pretty easy. So just come in here and draw along the line. Get that bottom out. Cut one side off. Come over here and cut the other side off. And I'll just nibble it away. So now I can go in there with a file and um, clean that up. So let me get the other ones cut out. All right, well, real quickly, I'm gonna take uh, my little counter sink here, or my, not counter sink, but a deburring tool for a hole. And I'm just gonna deburr all these little holes here. All right. Now we're going to cut our material, our way wiping material, and I've got two things here. First, this is just some felt, and uh, I've got a thickness of this and then also a little piece of just rubber, and between the two, it makes the way wiper. So the rubber is kind of on the very outside, and that wipes, uh, just kind of cleans that way as it goes, but then behind it, you have the felt, and the felt, the idea of the felt is, is that it will absorb oil, and just kind of uh, continue wiping as it goes. So uh, I'm going to cut me a piece of felt. And 
I'll just use a pair of scissors here. Okay. That will fit right down in there. And I want it to be a little bit tight so that it kind of rubs against that bottom down there. And then we're going to do the same thing here with the... Uh, with uh, the rubber. Should be this right width, so I'm just going to continue cutting up with that. And then as far as depth goes, rubber goes in the back. And the felt goes on top. And let's go ahead and we'll go put this one on. So this one's gonna go on this flat way back here. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna just take and uh, soak this uh, felt piece with some whey oil. Go ahead and pre-charge it. This will pick up, up oil and just continue wiping it as you use the machine. But we'll go ahead and start with a good charge on there. And I got me a couple of uh, set screws here, or socket cap screws rather. should wipe and clean that way to keep anything from getting up underneath it and also oil it all at the same time. So uh, let me get my uh, other ones pieces cut out and put on here and I think we'll have this job finished. Well there we go guys. I think we got them all on here. The three on this side of course there's three more just like that over here on the other side and uh, everything looks like it's working good. You can kind of see them there's not really a whole lot of trash on here, but you can kind of see them pushing that little line right there. And it's re-wicking the oil up underneath the bottom, doing exactly what a way wiper is supposed to do. Keep that trash out from underneath those ways uh, to protect them, make them last longer. We put all this work into scraping and putting turkite on there. We want to make sure that we protect all that stuff so that it... Uh, stays nice and fresh for a very, very long time. And uh, these way wipers should do the trick. And uh, just so you can see it, this is the one over here on the tailstock end. Does the exact same thing. We've got the felts and rubbers up underneath it. And uh, it'll keep the trash from getting up underneath the tailstock. Just what we need. One more job done on the 16 inch Monarch Model K lathe uh, to get this machine restored and ready to go. And actually, guys, other than just a few little small things that probably won't even make it into a video, I think we've pretty much got this machine finished, which I am very excited about. Uh, it's almost exactly two years since we started on this machine. It was about the first week in May two years ago when we had uh, Richard King's scraping class, and that's when we tore into this thing and ironically, I think we've had, uh, that was the second scraping class. We've had four scraping classes. So we had three, three scraping classes uh, that this lathe has actually been involved in uh, over the last two years. And I am very, very happy to have it pretty much done. And I got some work we need to do on this coming up very soon. So hopefully next time you see this lathe, you're gonna see us running it and using it. That's going to be a wrap, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this whole very long marathon series on uh, restoring this uh, Monarch lathe. Uh, like I said, I am just super excited. Uh, leave me comments if you like. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up are always appreciated. 
We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.